Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my newest patron, John L. Thank you for choosing to support the channel. So today we had the unlikeliest of accounts. This one with one post, but that post is a big one. The first sighting we've seen of a Model Y with Robotaxi on the side and no driver driving around Austin. And we know it's real because the Tesla team has been eager to share the post far and wide. Elon quoted it saying beautifully simple design. He said these are unmodified Tesla cars coming straight from the factory, meaning every Tesla coming out of our factories is capable of unsupervised self-driving. Stewart asked about the software on these cars and if it was the same version that customers are using on hardware for cars, or if it was a new version. Elon said it's a new version of software but will merge to the main branch soon. We have a more advanced model in alpha stage that has around four times the parameters but still requires a lot of polishing. That's probably ready for deploy in a few months. And this is great data, so whether this new version is version 14 or something different, it's currently being developed and tested in a separate branch to avoid destabilizing the main system. But it sounds like Tesla is pretty close to finalizing this version for production, meaning it could go to a wide release for all customers soon, but we know what soon means when it comes from Elon. The assumption is this new version is overfit for Austin, so it'd be awesome for one of the engineers to kind of explain how merging that with all of the new learnings into the main branch would actually work. I would also note this merging to the main branch doesn't have to mean that that's immediately when this will go to wide release. There's a good chance Tesla's going to be doing some testing and validation even after that happens. And then this more advanced model in alpha stage. In software, that just means an early model that's not yet complete, so it works, but it would still be considered experimental but it's the roughly 4x in parameter count that's the big deal. Just think of parameters as the numerical values that define the model's behavior. So they basically represent the weights or the biases in the neural network that determine how input data like video from the camera feeds is actually processed to produce the outputs, which in this case would be steering and avoiding obstacles, etc. So a model with more parameters is usually more complex, which means means it's capable of capturing more intricate patterns and ultimately making more sophisticated decisions. But as you might guess, more parameters usually means it requires more compute power and more data to actually be trained effectively. So at this point, I think it becomes a very fair question. What does all of this mean for hardware three? And while we don't have official answers and we can assume that Tesla is going to do everything it can to try to keep even these new models capable of being run on Hardware 3. If it's true that Hardware 3 is already near its limits with the current model, I think it's safe to say this one with four times the parameters might be beyond the limits of Hardware 3. But that model still requires a lot of polishing and a few months after you add the Elon multiplier, maybe toward the end of this year, perhaps into quarter one next year. Omar said, does the Robotaxi software have the 3X larger model compared to 13.29 or will we just get the 4X parameters later this year? Elon then said around 4.5X increase increase in parameters should be ready for wide release later this year. Super frugal use of memory bandwidth, caching exactly what is needed and squeezing microseconds out of everything are needed to maintain the frame rate. And the whole system needs to be retrained. So again, this larger parameter count is going to be the driving force allowing the model to capture more nuanced patterns in driving data. So when you think about really complex scenarios like crowded intersections or pedestrian behavior, or perhaps construction zones, you know, all of the edge cases, it can take in more precise levels of driving data and then output more precise controls. And not only that, but larger models usually perform better on tasks that require a lot higher level reasoning. So an example of that in the real world could be FSD approaching a busy intersection with multiple lanes. There are pedestrians, people on bikes, there's heavy construction activity, and then the light turns green, but the intersection is partially obstructed by a delivery truck. There's there's a group of pedestrians waiting to cross the street and there's a cyclist flying up from behind you. 
And then guess what? From a perpendicular street, maybe there's an emergency vehicle with sirens quickly approaching. These extra parameters could of course help the network to build a holistic model of the intersection in real time. And not only that, but the model can predict the likely actions of the other actors in the scene. Example, the light might turn red and then the pedestrians step into the crosswalk. Perhaps the guy on the bike is going to swerve to avoid the truck and the emergency vehicle is going to continue right through the intersection. So that's where reasoning comes in because the car is going to have to decide what the top priorities are. And it does that by assessing probabilities of the biker crossing the vehicle's path or a construction worker redirecting traffic while at the same time recognizing the legal and ethical priority of the emergency vehicle. And I would expect once they get this system dialed, it'll be the one that helps FSD to handle the super rare scenarios, like interpreting a construction worker's hand signals or perhaps not obeying an individual's hand gestures. For example, if somebody was just trying to mess with the robotaxi. So that's what I meant by reasoning. It goes well beyond just rule-based logic. And it's this line right here that leads me to believe, again, Tesla's always doing everything it can to make sure this new model runs on definitely hardware 4 and maybe hardware 3, because ultimately it's this computer on the car that's actually processing all of this data from the cameras. Caching would be storing certain data that is used frequently in fast access memory instead of slower main memory. So example, maybe FSD caches the data about a pedestrian's position while it gets rid of data that is less urgent like scenery that's far off in the distance. And I'm going through all of this, so hopefully you can understand all of the decision making and reasoning that goes into this and why a model with four or 4.5 times the parameters could be such a leap forward. Now, I know there is some concern out there about this one, the whole system needs to be retrained. Yes, the first thought that comes to mind is maybe it needs to be retrained because of the new front bumper camera on some of the newer vehicles. Retraining the system could be required to integrate this new data stream into the overall neural network. Because remember, you'd have to teach the system how to interpret new data from that front bumper camera. But I would be fairly confident in saying the main reason for retraining training is really the new model's much bigger architecture and more expanded capabilities, not just a new front bumper camera. So as a customer with FSD, I think it would be fair to expect a new version sometime soon, maybe in the next month or two, sometime shortly after this new version that's running on these Robotaxi Model Ys when that merges to the main branch. But then after that, we could have another lengthy wait of at least a few months for this new, much bigger bigger model. And this is certainly part of the reason we haven't received more frequent FSD updates the past few months. That's because a lot of the compute resources are being thrown at this new model and of course the new software version that's overfit for Austin. And perhaps one of the most bullish takeaways from this commentary is that just a new version, maybe 13.3, is going to be good enough for unsupervised. And I'm guessing at least a few of you are now getting some random texts from friends and family members asking about what's going on. And I'm sure you'll be eager to answer, but speaking of some other random text messages, I know a lot of you are getting random text messages, random spam phone calls, phishing emails, and so on. This is definitely a warning sign that your personal information is likely being sold all over the internet thanks to a lack of laws that prevent the data broker industry from doing this. Thankfully, there is an easy way out of this and that's with Delete Me, the sponsor of this video. If you buy anything online or have any accounts online, you're likely more in need of the service services of Delete Me than you think. I've shown the staggering fraud numbers in the past, and Delete Me is an American-based company that only does this one thing. They remove your personal information from these data brokers, and they do so in an ongoing fashion so your data stays removed which is critical because new data brokers are constantly popping up. 
Delete Me sends quarterly reports and they list out the status of your removals at each data broker. They have excellent customer service if you ever need it or have questions and you can see with my latest report, this has saved me hundreds of hours of work and headaches over just the past few months. Checking out sponsors really is one of the best ways to support the channel. So if you'd like to take your privacy back, you can head to joindeleteme.com slash electrified to get 20% off using my code electrified linked below or by using the QR code on the screen. Elon said Austin over LA for the RoboTaxi launch, LOL, for obvious reasons. But then Owen asked about the first public rides. To that, Elon said tentatively June 22nd. We're being super paranoid about safety, so the date could shift. The first Tesla that drives itself from the factory end of line all the way to a customer house is June 28th. So my interpretation of this for the next 12 days, it's still only going to be for Tesla employees in Austin for these robo taxi rides. They'll keep testing and validating the system and the software and everything that goes into launching this service. And so if you're thinking about booking a flight to Austin to actually take a ride, it sounds like June 22nd is the earliest window for now. And again, that's definitely not set in stone. And I'm desperately hoping that if Tesla actually pulls off this car going from the factory to a customer house, that they blow it up all over social media, because that would actually be something from Tesla that deserves headline news. And I think I owe all of you an apology. Elon did text me this morning saying that the real reason he's bumping it back 10 days is because he doesn't want to take away from my birthday. So Elon just doing the right thing, but for everybody else, you're going to have to wait a little bit longer. Dave Lee said there's a high likelihood in his opinion that Tesla signs an FSD licensing deal with at least one automaker by the end of the year. Elon replied saying the automakers keep being told this is not real or that just buying some hardware from Nvidia will solve it. As Tesla robotaxis become widespread and their other solutions don't work, they will naturally turn to us. And I'm so glad Elon said this because I've tried in the past to explain how buying these tools from Nvidia is not just going to match magically solve this problem. So there you go. Don't take my word for it. Take Elon's. Ashok shared the post saying slowly, slowly at first and then, and the rest of the quote is all at once. And I'm guessing that's what most analysts are still for whatever reason not wrapping their heads around how fast theoretically Tesla can expand this program. And even if you only focus on AI for vehicles, that's still millions of cars. One of the lead engineers at Tesla said it's go time. Charles from the autopilot team said it's happening for real. A lot of work has gone into this first driverless testing on public roads from modeling and algorithm to system and operation. Proud of the team and more to come. Srihari from Tesla's AI team said a tremendous amount of testing is underway to ensure a safe and slow rollout in the beginning. The future is going to be wild. The official Tesla account shared a robot and a taxi emoji. Sawyer asked for a date and the account responded with a picture of three dates. Confucius said at the pace they're pushing, FSD will be 100 times better than Lewis Hamilton at driving around a racetrack. Elon replied saying Tesla AI and autopilot could probably beat the best human around a track already. Eventually, it really won't be a contest at all. Human reflexes cannot match machines. Elon said the streets will change very rapidly. Autonomous cars will be very common throughout the world in two to three years. Brett from Arc said this lays out the path for the Austin Road robotaxi rollout to scale more broadly. That the Austin build will merge into the main demonstrates this is not a simple overfitting exercise. The advances there will yield broader advances in other cities. Additional parameters will allow the model to ingest and generalize against more data, perhaps required as the robotaxi stages into cities with very different driving cultures and weather and road environments. He suspects a 4x parameter boost is up against the limits of the A 
AI4 chip and even then will require software and staging optimizations, which adds some weight to my thesis that this 4 or 4.5x model could go beyond the capabilities of Hardware 3. And who knows, maybe on the call we'll get a question about Hardware 3 upgrades, and I think ideally it would be awesome if you could go from Hardware 3 to AI5 and just skip AI4. Don't forget AI5 was supposed to be ready to start shipping sometime later this year or early next. So look, for those that have been following this company for the past decade plus, this really is a special monumental day. It's just a fact, this is a decade in the making, and while some out there will roll their eyes about one car being spotted operating driverless, many of us know what the implications are for the rest of the fleet following suit over the next 12 to 18 months. And this is absolutely a huge milestone to celebrate for the Tesla AI and autopilot teams, and it will undoubtedly undoubtedly reignite a spark getting to watch the public react and getting to see their years of hard work come to fruition. Then as a Tesla owner, I think it now becomes even easier to look at your car and envision deploying it as a robotaxi if that's a route you want to take. <laughs> because who can forget all of the times Elon said that this would be the greatest asset value increase in history. And sure, there are still questions like price per mile and wait times and we'll see if Tesla has any Waymo moments where a car gets stuck or confused. But we'll have plenty of time to get into that in the weeks ahead as more data comes out. For now, I think it's best to just take a beat and appreciate the journey that it's been to get here. From Model 3 production hell to the launch of the Model Y, Elon buying Twitter, Elon getting involved in politics, Elon's pay package being rescinded and all of the voting with that, Tesla changing its mission to sustainable abundance, FSD version 12 going fully end to end, and the list goes on. There have been plenty of ups and downs over the years and it has not been smooth sailing to get here, but we've made it. And this is definitely a moment to celebrate. And the next question, when will the first paid ride be? Maybe a few days or maybe another two weeks, but it's coming and this is without a doubt a new paradigm and a new chapter for Tesla. A quick note, MKBHD said that he would shave his head if Tesla delivers the cyber cab for under $30,000 before the end of 2026. To my understanding, the bet was not for driverless in Austin. There was some other minor news today, but we can save it for later this week. It felt like today needed its own episode. A quick walk down memory lane looking back on how far Tesla has come, and a peek into the future of much bigger and more capable advanced FSD models that could enable the entire fleet to move toward unsupervised. As always, prepare yourself for setbacks and attacks that's not going to randomly go away, but a huge part of the future we've been waiting for and talking about for years is finally here. And the implications for the world as we know it, for our children and future generations really cannot be overstated. So to everyone that held tight and saw through the noise, congratulations. Hopefully some time this week you can find some time to sit back, reflect, and enjoy the moment. Tesla stock closed the day at $326.09, up 5.67%, while the NDX was up 0.66%. The volume was 36% above the average. Don't forget, check out the Leap Me linked below for those interested if you wanted to take back your privacy for you and your family. As always, thank you for supporting the channel in that way. Hope you have a wonderful day. Please like the video if you did. You can find me on X linked below. And a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.